I've got so many addresses, they must have moved every year, I think. <laughs> you know, I'm sort of leaning towards that she was only a, a washerwoman, mm. laundress, and not yeah. um, a preacher or, or a speaker. Even though I found her address when she married, and it's very close to Speaker's Corner yeah. in Hyde Park, Oh, wow. So, but she was, I always have memories of, we used to call her Mum A, and we'd go and visit. We lived in Adelaide. She was in Murray Bridge in the country. And every weekend she'd have baking. And she just had the pinny, you know, the old-fashioned pinnies yeah. on all the top. And she just used to give the best hugs and, she, you know, just all the smell of baking and everything was always what I really miss about. When I saw this on TV, I thought it was great. I'm in. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank I remembered I'd written down the National Library uh, oh. from last week. So I thought, oh. So I sort of went into there and I, you know, wasn't really sure what I was looking at. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to send them an email. And it was like the next day going there and there's an email from them with my grandmother's brothers and sisters, her parents, her great-grandparents. I was like, oh, wow, this is great. <laughs> so, so, so we were just talking and having a play around and we just typed in her name and there she came up on Google. And um, it was because she was one of the first pioneer ancestors, col colonists, what, no, colonists, colonists, yeah. colonists sorry, yeah. um, to South Australia. And uh, she was a housemaid at Government House in South Australia and she came out on the William Mitchell ship and, and there was a picture yeah. of her. So oh. I printed out the picture and that, and would you believe we've got the same nose? Oh. We've actually got the same nose. That was, I showed my husband, didn't say anything. And uh, he said, oh, hey, he said, have you looked at the nose? Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. so, generation after generation, to my grandmother who made me start this journey and what a beautiful person she was. That this is why I can see how she's been turned to that type of person because of all the women back in her life. And yes, to who is her? Uh, Wilhelmina Ostenia Tetzlav. Oh, wow. Ooh. Basically, I have found out who, who her employer was here back in the... Um, early 1860-something, um, he turns out to be the first white person to settle here. Oh, so definitely, because it opened up um, more about how Mackay was back then, actually, and to the pla names of places have changed so much. I, I think it gives you um, a sense of pride, too, as to what these people went through to, to make this town that you've been born and bred in so, mm -hmm. so wonderful. But I have since found... Um, through um, a book from Hamburg that uh, she didn't actually go to New York. She came down the east coast of Africa and right underneath Australia, past Tasmania and back up the east side. So, oh, yeah, wow. so she had a little rendezvous on the east coast of Africa, which resulted in my grandmother. <laughs> oh, oh, that's exciting. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. Being who she, she was 24, she decided to find another husband and had another 10 children, so... It's incredible, isn't it? I can't... <laughs> okay. I actually have, um, it's not my story, but it's somebody else's story, sorry. Um, but, um, you know, um, they decided to name their child when they had gave birth out in the country, and for the time the husband had a couple of grogs and got to town, and he named it completely differently. <laughs> so I want to know where she was living and what the times were like and yes. um, and the housing and, um, and, and, you know, she had 10 children and she lost six of them, you know, they all died in, uh, at a young age and so I just wanted to have a look at, at that and obviously why and how that that um, happened with the children and, and what life was like for her. It's been really great. I was still getting stuck on information on after um, my lady had arrived in Australia and it was all sort of a bit hazy after that. And I was working my way through all the children to try and find some records and stuff. And I came across last night, actually, a whole entire blog that someone has dedicated their life to doing this whole family history of this particular family. You know, all the way back to 1000 AD. 
And so everything that I've spent the last five weeks researching is all there. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Gives you so much insight into looking into their way of life rather than just finding facts and figures. Yes. Dates and marriages. You know, this yeah. has given me more insight into how to actually do do a proper um, life yeah. story about them, really. Um, I think by working with the group, it would help enhance in your own story. Mm -hmm. It's just ongoing. You yeah. find something and then, then you've got to find something else to work out why that happened, yeah. you know. So it's good to have so much locally as well. Yes. Really good. Yeah. We've been coal miners, you know, miners in my family way back. And I always thought that women did go underground. Yes. Because I've got, and I've read about that, but then I read in Wales that it was illegal to allow women. Women never went underground oh. in Wales. Yeah. You know, like what the life would have been like in Wales mm -hmm. at the time that she left, and you know, when she, she left when she was 21. And um, I wonder, I married, um, I came from, my mother's so all Irish, right. and I married an Englishman. I remember my mother being horrified that I married an Englishman. <laughs> Well, she's a Welsh woman, and I think she married an Englishman. I wonder whether yes. there were similar things. Oh, uh, it's my great great grandmother, Annie Elizabeth Adams. Just looking at just now on the computer, I found some of the nonconformist records. Just I don't, and all I did was put in a street name. It was I wasn't even looking for that those records that I'd been looking for. Put in the street records, and it just brought up this nonconformist that I've been looking for all week. Not a picture, but a, like a map of mm. the institution where she died, and it was a, it was a poorhouse. So what I did wrong was I only focused on who they were, where they were born, occupations and things. I didn't focus on the stories. Um, I've learnt that I have to look at what I've got already. Mm -hmm. Last week we just said... We need to go back and look at our certificates that we had or originally because yeah. I've just bought the death certificate. And so I went home and had a look at uh, my all my certificates and I found her birth certificate, her marriage certificate, her father's birth certificate, her parents' marriage certificate that I've had since 1990 in the cupboard. I've um, found a bit more about the um, NMA's life. Um, I looked, got into the newspapers, and, and that seems to tell you a bit more about their life, the, you know, the daily life and what they've been up to. And, and her husband, her third husband, when it was his 80th birthday, she, she held a party for him, and um, it was a write up in the newspaper, and a bit, and it also tells you who was there, and you know, then you get to know who the, their friends were and things like that. Yeah. Had a lovely family story. I asked a cousin if he knew anything because it's his grandmother and he said the only thing he knew was a story from his mother who was this great grandmother's youngest daughter that um, when they moved to Harrogate, they were living in a town called Casillas and it was um, a horse ride over Mount Hotham with my great grandmother clutching her eldest son um, the whole way to um, go on a great big mountain journey on horseback to go to settle in Harrietville where they lived all their lives. Wow. Mm. So that, yeah. that was that was nice and it gave me a bit more of a lift to keep searching. Yeah. It would have been a big journey carrying a baby at your breast. It would have yes. been horrendous <laughs> trying to ride a horse through those conditions. Yeah. So yeah. just her personal story as close as I can get. That's what I'm aiming for. Thank you. I was here yesterday finding it out and... Uh, Yes, it was a bit of euphoria, <laughs> I can tell you. This is the fifth week of the project and so I was starting to despair a bit that it wasn't going to come together. And um, now it has for me. I found out the things that I actually did set out to find out. So um, I have heard a few stories about my grandmother's life, um, but I'd like to know a little bit more about where she came from and her ancestors as well. Um, so, and I also, have, I'm very interested in the process of um, finding out about ancestors and history. I've so. chosen to look up, uh, to look up my great, great grandmother. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's, I, it's a very mysterious little story in there somewhere. And I, yeah, I haven't 
that nobody's told me anything really about her and there's a lot of mystery so I'd just like to find out a little bit more. Not too bad, we've found a couple of little pieces of information that have led to us going different ways so um, there's still a fair bit of mystery. So. I, I think for me the most interesting part is I found that um, my grandmother was five when her mother died. She died quite young at 42, yeah. I think it was. I think, oh, did, was, did she die in childbirth? Was there, you know, another brother or sister un, yeah. under her? Or what happened to her after then? Because there's been talk of an orphanage somewhere along the line. Well, we've actually... Oh, sorry, yeah, right. We yeah. actually found out that they were all born in Australia, which was we thought they came from Ireland. And we found out that her husband actually came from America, so yeah. that was a bit of a shock because we always thought it was Irish, the Irish ancestry. Oh, so, <laughs> our journey this week has been so frustrating. We just keep running into brick walls. Yeah, it's been yeah. very, very hard, but and it's doing my head in. <laughs> um, I'd like to keep discovering, and I would like to make up a little booklet that just so the family can keep because we never had anything yes. and I would have liked to have had a little bit of information and that's why I'm doing this. And I sort of think once I find it, I don't want it to be lost forever. I yeah. want something there so that my kids can keep it and they can pass it on too. Yeah. It's not a lot that they like to give out on the orphanages, but I'll, I'll investigate further. But there was so many of them, I couldn't believe it, how many orphanages there were. Yeah. And have you enjoyed it? Has it been oh. difficult? No, it hasn't been difficult. It's been really enjoyable. Loved it. Okay. And um, yeah, just just the way people lived in those times. I'm going to really miss it. I mm. won't know what to do next Tuesday. <laughs> like to um, share with other people. Definitely, it yeah. is. Uh, it does your heading, but it's a good feeling to yeah. to get a, a result later on. I'm a photographer, and so I do um, yeah. photos are a big thing for me, and I do make up photo books. And so I've already made a start on, on doing that and I'd love to make a photo book at the end of this, uh, it's, you know, a coffee table book that, that yeah. a family member can just pick it all up and it's there. So it's, it's very interesting to, you know, just start looking into the background and why, you know, you just wonder why they did it and where they went and it's so interesting to start finding bits and pieces and you can tie their life into a story, which is what this program's all about. It's really good. Okay. Girls at work and that have got enthused as well. Um, there's one always been on board, but the other, a couple of others have sort of coming on board and I've done a little bit of stuff for them as well. Yeah, yeah no, it's been excellent. Yeah. Basically, I want to put all this information together and maybe um, either put it in a, a digital thing or in a, a book sort of thing for... Um, so that my mother can read it and let her have a look at it and also the rest of the family, you know. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Yes. Oh, I was jumping up and down and then anyone got any news, I was the first one there to jump it out. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it sounds that's really good. good. Yeah. We're off, Sarah. Off to find gold. And that's what I put in the in my ancestor's mouth. <laughs> that is wonderful, Marlene. I can Thank just you. picture it all happening. That's great. That is so cool. Thank you. <laughs>